Hey everyone, um, if you saw my video earlier in this afternoon, I mean this morning, when it was posted in the afternoon because we had no Wi-Fi, the entire area was out of power. Like from a middle school not far from here to, I guess the beach not far from here. And um, lo and behold, I was right, a power transmitter transformer had exploded again so we were out of power until 8 48 i knew that because i looked at my phone and i don't know how i remember the time exactly so that was weird so it was nothing paranormal unfortunately Shh, don't tell my mother <laughs> and i don't know no, weird things have calmed down since in the other video I posted the other day. But I haven't been home alone or the only one awake for a long time. Um, well not a long time, that's a lie, but y'all know what I mean. So anyway, without further ado, let's continue our Halloween tour. And... And I'm actually decided to rewatch Wednesday on Netflix because season two has finally been confirmed and I'm like, I'm so there. And season five from Stranger Things, hell yet. Like, I know unfortunately it's the final season. I'm like, but I mean, they passed as many older. I'm not sure if I'm going to like the um, spinoff, if they do do one, because they've been talking about it, but who knows? So again, let's continue our Hollywood tour. And my black makeup is inspired by Wednesday. It's not perfect like hers, because she has like makeup people, but um, it's inspired. Anyway, again. The Hollywood Pantanes Pantanes Theater is no doubt one of the one of the most extravagant theaters in the world. An art deco masterpiece located in the heart of Hollywood, it was popular venue for many dazzling stage performances and movie premieres. It is a thrilling rep representation of Hollywood's golden age, tracing its roots. Back to the glorious value value days. If I'm pronouncing it in wrong in the future, in advance, I apologize. It turns out that the painting theater is such a unique, is such as unique as, is such as unique to the dead as it is for the living. Over the decades, some of the personnel that and have reported after since that roam the theater's majestic, majestic rooms and passageways. Some of this iconic net and owners clear, clearly never left. The Pantene Theater was the last theater built by the venue and inspirational Alex Henry. Alex Sanier Pantins and designed an accommodant, cannot read tonight, value mill performance and film event. It opened its doors on June 4th, 1930, with significant fanfare and celebrity guests. At, at the time of this opening, the state of the art theater featured 2,812 seats, opulent staircases, and star star ceiling patterns. Massive chandeliers, all for the cost of 1.25 million. It has a fancy, lavishly, lavishly decorated lobby and 24-foot wide staircase. On each end, the staircase was adorned with life-sizing Texan and Astro Mamie Luian cellular statues, representing the hard work of the film industry. 
It also home to an orchestra pit, backstage era, balconies, and backstage dressing rooms. Other employees work behind the scenes and station in the upper floor offices of the conference rooms. The Peterson Theater is truly an apartment of magnificence. But even the grand Granite landmark runs across its misfortunes. Its operations are hit hard by the Great, Great Depression. Limestone bags prove, prove to be so expensive, so, mag so magnetic, was forced to equalize by converting to an all Moving plate to an all moving plate. Why is my eye messing with me now? With occasional musical arts and sponsored events. In 1949, the Pan St. Steiner was acquired by the business man, man, man is, I need to learn how to read. Mainsman Howard Hughes. It was rena renamed. R.K.O. Pantene's was considered the crown jewel of his film production company and movie theater chain R.K.O. Pictures. The R.K.O. Pantene Theater Paul is Hayes, Hayes from the 19, from 1950 to 1959 when it was chosen as the venue for the annual Academy Awards. This went on for a decade until the event needed a much larger location. In 1967, the Pantheon Theater was brought to a brought by Pacific Pacific Theaters, a company known for its massive inventory of a drive-in in California. And up up in Hawaiian Hawaiian they started major renovations and restoration. Work to remediate rem to to the, to the old building. They also reverted its old stage theater setup, but successfully restored it to its old splendor. Then to its old splendor didn't happen overnight. Pacific Theater restored structure to its original seating captivity of over 2,700 and worked with the Netherlander organization for a grand return as the stage theater. And by the way, not here because I live nowhere near Hollywood, but I've been to Phantom and the Opera, Anastasia, Return to Neverland. I know there was one more, but um, all of them on a theater theater stage are beautiful. Um, if you have it there, wherever you live, Phantom of, Phantom of the Opera is a must see. I loved it. Oh, and Wicked. That was the other one. Wicked. I cried. In February, in February of 1977, it reopened with the live run of Broadway shows. Well, but Bummy and Brown Singer, it was followed by several performances from Mino, Mino Nina, Lai, Lenke, Octopus, to Nikine and I, Singer, and Singer Babies. In addition to the Pain Science Theater, we became newly restored favorite venue for special celebrated event charitable event. And as Pacific Theater partnership with Neverlander Corporation proceeded, proceeded found in the restoration and renovation effort. In the year 2000, they fully renovated the, the interiors. It was a $10 million project that finally bore fruit with the, with the arrival of The Lion King. i never seen it, but my mom has, and she said it was fantastic. Obviously not in Hollywood. 
The Saints play alongside film Merchandise Item, So Popular and Profitable, it helped the theater rise from the ashes. More restorations were made into, into the years that followed. The missing chandeliers were replaced, lobby floor, lo, the lobby floors, walls, and ceilings were brought back to their classic glory. The art decor of a strain masterpiece was cleaned and, re and repaired. The Saints returned to its first rate set for Broadway shows. More office spaces were also com completed. Standing up to its long estimated establishment grandeurd, changes after changes to off for the better. But is it possible that these changes distribute spirits around? And yes, if you're asking, it has been widely known that if you renovated any old buildings, houses that had people passing away or killed, unfortunately, in the area, their spirits have been known to wake up during restaurant, uh, during renova renovations, and a lot of people have had to leave their dream home because of it. Lots of haunting and all these North Coast, you see what I mean. A provocation that prompted a haunting, it seems that the guests forever attached to the theater continue to stand ground, show after show and even behind the scenes. So that reminds me, I was doing, excuse me, I was in a concert with my school when I was in middle school because I took chorus. And we rewatched it, and this big orb went right, right behind the stage. It was huge, and the entire cast and I freaked out. Like, what the heck was that? I'm not even kidding you. It was big like this mirror. It was as big as the mirror. I'm not kidding. But I don't know if anyone will remembers that from my school days. But anyway, I'm not mad on my school days, dear lord. <clears throat> Those who have suddenly lost their lives in the most unexpected circumstances continue to stay in place they love the, the most. And I turn the mirror because the reflection is freaking me out. As spirits, they spent their afterlife here on Earth, watching over the building that they love. They, the ghosts of Pantene Cleaner are still trying to live their dreams, as if they are alive by roaming the passageways of the place they once visited or called in their own. While lost, while lots of early motion picture historical accounts don't even mention his name, it's clear that Alexander Pantanes is forced to reckon with the venial mill and motion picture industry. Initially, he managed other people theaters that soon, but, but soon invest, invested in a large chain of theaters across the United States and Canada. His life is not all money and passion for arts. Pantanes must have given some of um, doing something as inspiration as an, an inspiring venue dancer and I blocked out the word because you do a crime he didn't commit the expensive legal battle left him financial ruin leading him to sell the theater to RKO on a much lower or lower sum Alexander Pantanes is a father of the Pantanes' theater and always will be. He keeps a watchful eye on the main floor like he used to when he was alive. His spirit is said to walk up, up, up and down the aisles during stage performances too. When, when the attendants open the door for him, he just disappears. A chilling account from the 1990s speaks 
of the Warren Garb lady who is sworn out by an unknown person. She was said to be the last to leave the theater. And since the lights were already turned off, she was having a hard time finding her way out. All of a sudden, someone took her gently by the elbow and guided her to the exit. One, once outside, she turned to thank the person who helped her, but saw no one. She said that she heard footsteps and it was too short of a time for a person to run out. People believe that the ghostly encounter was with Alex Daniel Pantins himself. A gentleman from even beyond the grave. Howard Hughes was one of the notable people drove theater to success, but Alex Hanier himself, but Alex Hanier his life was not all praise and admiration. Despite his financial success, Hughes was widely recognized as an extraordinary man and his days in the theater witnesses processing mental decline. Howard Hughes left the painting theater and death didn't stop him from running it. Lingo mentioned saying that uh, says a break in my venue in 1990s prompted the haunting on the second floor conf conf conference room. The Hughes once held office since the employees have re reported cold spots for unexplained reasons, as well as hours in this area. Rattling deck drawers and cigarette smoke smells are also common occurrences. Now, I normally, I not regularly, but regularly smell cigarette smoke here. Because no one smokes in my family. But the only one who I can think of is my grandfather. Um, that's the only one who I can think about who smoked. I never met him, but um, that's what my grandmother said, my nanny, said that he did a lot after he came back from the wars. In 1920, 1929, I cannot read tonight, what the flip? In 1992, the Nether Corporation Executive Assistant reported a tall male figure walking down the hall into an old office. Then he heard door handles being rattled and drawers being opened and closed. She also felt an unseen presence in cold passing wind in the area with no source of availability. Apart from the spending time in, in his office, it appears that watching rehearsals is an afterlife homie. One time, during a stage rehearsal, performers saw a mysterious man watching them sitting in the back row of the balcony. He disappeared even before security got to question him. Two workers quit during rest restoration process back in 2000 after experiencing an eerie encounter with an unknown male supervisor. An, electri an electrician was doing some work, inspe work wiring inspection when a mysterious person glanced over his shoulder. A painter who was restoring the higher parts of the theater auditorium reported that he saw a man climb down from the balcony with a to be telephoning. He was wearing a hat and walking around inspecting the site. He stopped where the painter was working and just like what happened to the electrician, the man leaned over to suck his work. Confused, the painter turned to ask who he was, but the ghost and ghostly inspector disappeared. Some theorize that it can be Alex Jr. Passes, Hughes, Howard Hughes, or someone else who supervised the theater back in the day. In 1932, a pardoned aspiration performer was said to have died in the mezzanine. Died in the mezzanine. Since then, her singing voice has been heard throughout the theater. 
Okay, I'll say that's it. Still saying this until today when the microphone is left on. Some incidences of mysterious voices being picked up by audio audio system during shows. It seems like she was a fan of Andrew, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Once she unusually sings tune from Joseph and the Amazing Technic and Color Dreamco and the Phantom of the Opera. There is no official report of death in Sun Pantis Theater, though, so, so there is a lot of mysterious surroundings probed in incidences involving a female singer. Some say she died of an unknown disease. Some say she committed suicide. There is no firm evidence of form in the form of video or photographer, but there's sure that goes Notes that the Pantene Theater are some of the most passionate spirits ever. The show personnel, per personnel performers, directors, and other employees are all witness to, to how special, to how the spectral residents go about their usual, their usual routine. Like how they run do even when they, if they were still alive. They're still here for a reason. All the magic, music, arts, and the film. The Funny One Pantene Theater, I want to soak go in a heartbeat, not just for the arts and film and music, but for the paranormal, obviously. Um. If I ever met a, a nice spirit like that, and if I could, I would talk to them, like, what's the afterlife like, what to say all about, and all of that. So they seem pretty open and curious about the living, at that place at least. Anyway, thank you for watching my channel and videos. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I am Haunted Girl, and I'll speak to you later. The paranormal is my playground. Until next time, pleasant dreams.